Hey everybody, John Grimsmo here, bringing you a tips and tricks video, something I've been wanting to do for quite a long time. Just random little odd things that we've learned throughout the shop. Um, we'll see how many we can get to. Tip number one, Sharpies. I gotta have a Sharpie close by all the time. I like the double-ended ones with a fine tip on the other side, making notes all the time. Um, I like to have Sharpies. Also made this cool Sharpie mount so that I can have Sharpie, Nano Oil, uh, my fancy fountain pen, and this other pen. Quick draw, right by my table, get stuff done. Oh, that's cool. Sticks right into the foam thing. Yep. And that's how it stays up. All right, here's a really big one that uh, took me years of machining to figure out. It feels stupid. Having your computer right next to your CNC machines. Uh, because when I was in my garage, if you remember all the old Knife Making Tuesday videos, it is just amazing to see these knives lined up and be able to pick them all up and know that they're all perfect and test them all out. My computer, I had a nice like desktop, two monitors, was in my office next to the bedrooms. So anytime I needed to make a code change, I'd have to walk through the house, through the kitchen, play with my kids, talk to my wife, do the code change, and then do all that on the way back out, back to the garage. Uh, so there was a lot of interruption, a lot of distraction. Having the computer right here to make a quick change, upload code, now it's just a matter of, you know, if I'm taking out the USB to put it on the Nakamura, or if I'm sending it directly to the Mori, it's just a step away, which is, huge like I don't know why that took me so long obviously you need a shop computer to do that uh, and now I have so shaller bins love these things here we've got all our pen junk we're working on designing a new pen top secret um, just to help organize clean things up so I also use them right here to sort out and organize all the end mills I'm not 100% satisfied with it because the end mills do kind of rock around, but I haven't noticed any chipping from that. Super handy. Bigger ones here for the drill bits. So we actually started 3D printing our own because I just wanted more and I didn't want to buy them. And we could. So that brings us to the 3D printer, which is like a super great hack. I love having this printer. Right now we're printing another air compressor handle. Because why throw away an air compressor gun when you can print a new one. So, I mean, we've used this to make all kinds of little things for around the shop. Check out our 3D printer video card here to see a bunch of the stuff that we've made. So Angelo had the great idea to use these little bits of Kaizen foam uh, between all the T-slots, the parts where chips used to just kind of get stuck all the time, like right there, they would just never come out. Here they can be flushed underneath, but this little section, there's a section here, there's a section over here, and it's been great because now the chips don't, uh, don't get stuck in there. I love it. Green painter's tape. Love this stuff. Use it to make notes all the time. I stick it right to my window so I can't miss it. Change uh, TO2 insert. That way I don't forget. Something that doesn't have to happen right now, but you know it's gonna happen soon. perfect example of the tape, but also check this out. We've got coolant filters. I bought parts from McMaster Car. I actually got the idea from Jay Pearson. He posted a parts list and everything. Uh, filter that coolant. Love it. Uh, I've got two places we'll show this, but down here we've got these uh, extension cord covers that I got from Uline. Made a big difference. Like, then you don't trip over them. Then they're not all over the place. It keeps them in place. I love it. So I've got one over here and I've got one by my table as well.
always remember to put your gloves on when you're going opening an oven that's 1,935 degrees. Pizza's done in four seconds. Give you guys two really quick heat treating tips. This is not a how-to, but we love these uh, foil packages from Valpac that seal the blades from oxygen, contaminants, whatever. While you're heat treating, here's all the old ones that have been oxygen burned on the outside. Um, these are awesome. They are laser welded, uh, save us tons of time. We used to fold the seams before, silly. So that, and also, baby powder. I'll leave it at that. So these wall organizers over here, we've gone through many different ways to use them. Um, we found out that a knife fits perfectly inside, so we use them to kind of organize all of our parts. Uh, when we were doing the big Rask pre-order, we'd machine, 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 and we'd rack up here, and we'd have like starburst handles, starburst handles, starburst handles. We'd have ready for tumbling on the top row, tumbled on the bottom row. Um, we'd put our green tape on the top and we'd write the serial number on each one. Uh, right now we're on more of a daily flow so that we're not actually using this every day like we were then, uh, but we're using the bins, which is great. So it's sort of like collecting all of our garbage right now. Down here we've got all these spare Timascus parts that uh, we'll get to eventually, but we can label the pattern of what it is so that we don't forget. And then Barry uses this every day. So once we machine a blade, it goes into the to be deburred bucket and then so the raw machine blades will go in here and then he deburs them and then they're ready for the oven and then when he's ready to do heat treat he pulls them out of here so he knows his heat treating schedule based on how these are full windex greatest cleaner ever we use it for everything we use it to clean the parts after they come off the machine we use it to uh, I don't know, I clean the knives off after anodizing. We used to wash the floors, we used to wash the machines. Like, it's the one standard cleaner, clean the bathroom, clean the office, mop with it. It's awesome, so we always try to keep it handy. Uh, I actually just bought more of these. And these are cool too, actually. Got these from Home Depot. Um, nice industrial containers, we buy Windex and the big jugs now. It's excellent. Okay. Another one that I've mentioned before, but I can't mention it enough because it took me far too many years to figure this out. So your calipers on a lathe, my code will tell me the stock needs to stick out so far. So I used to go, I used to go like this, then the numbers are upside down, or I used to go use the tips like that, which is annoying. I never realized that there's a step from here to here until like a year and a half ago when somebody showed me. Um, but that step measures the part perfectly. So if my stick out needs to be 450, close enough, um, that's so much easier than all of the other methods combined. Love it. So on this Nakamura lathe, reset rewind is a button I'm hitting many, many times a day, and the off button is right there. So far too many times I've accidentally hit the off button, which shuts the machine down. It's stupid, it's stupid. So. Just the other day, I 3D printed an off cover, I actually typed in off on the top. Uh, it was too sloppy, so Eric suggested uh, electrical tape on the inside. And now, oh, like a glove. Now you will not accidentally be turning the machine off. I love it. Now I gotta turn it back on again. So here we've got two pairs of metal tweezers. I just got them from the local drugstore. A uh, blunt set and a pokey set. And we, you know, the reality of the shop life is you get, uh, splinters and like cuts and little weird stuff in your skin all the time so you know we use these or um, Angelo said that back in the day he would actually use the calipers because they have a very fine ground point um, to take out a little splinter which I thought was a kind of a cool trick Done. don't know what to do with my hands <laughs> So something else I love, I keep this right by my side, is this little loop. I bought this thing for like $4 on Amazon. I bought a bunch of them. Uh, I think it's 60, 60 times magnification. It's got an LED on it. I use this thing. We make such tiny detailed parts that I use this thing all the time 
to look at the little chamfers, to look at the chatter, to look at the tool wear, uh, just the finish, everything. So super handy. Uh, the upgraded version to this is our new microscope that we got a few months ago that I don't think I've talked about. It's a Leica A60 with LED. It's only, uh, I think, 30 times zoom. 30 or 15? 30. 30 times zoom, but uh, it's amazing. And the clarity, it's a, uh, um, there's a word for the two lenses. Stereoscope, I think stereoscopic or something like that um, the clarity and quality that you see under there is like insane compared to what I'm used to with this you don't need that much zoom because you just see it that much better real quick let's microscope the inside of one of our torque screws right here this beautiful sweater that my wife bought for me is a good cleaning device So I've got it angled on the block. So there we've got it focused on the bottom of the hole and we can focus up to the top too. It's so hard to film. So after trying to film like through the eyepiece, which is very difficult as you saw, um, they have ones with a built-in camera that go to a TV screen and that'll definitely be the next version that we get. But for now, I mean, for actual usage, this is just amazing. Uh, so this uh, angled V-block, whatever you call it, I got it from Tormac back in the day when uh, I was using my Tormac. It's a vice gripper jaw thingy, but on the microscope is like absolutely perfect because it can hold end mills. Um, we can roll it up on its side to hold like a flat part. If we want to look at, you know, this thing right here, then we just zoom the microscope up and down to do what we want, but it belongs here. It's so perfect. Very awkward to film through the eyepiece, um, but it shows you sort of what it looks like to be able to look at an end mill really close. You can see that tip is uh, chipped off right there. So we can go through the whole end mill and we can look for any chips and wear. I see one right there in the middle. And we can look at our tiny parts that we make and just make sure that everything is perfect. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Something I need to do, but I haven't done yet. When we pull out the material, every piece has to get measured to put in the lathe. So we walk over there, we get the tape measure, we pull it back. What I have to do is I have to mount a tape measure to there or to the front of the machine or something like permanently so that you can just take a rod and you can go, oh, it's 42 and a half inches long. That's all you need. Um, yeah, I, I need to do that. So I made a 3D printed Sharpie holder here uh, that even says point that way because it's one size only. Um, so that's pretty cool. What I really want to do is create a ring of magnets around both sides of the um, Sharpie that attach, maybe they super glue to the cap so that I can just stick it to anywhere on the metal because we need Sharpies everywhere and I want them everywhere. So I might 3D print a little ring where magnets go inside and then we can just not have to have that kind of thing but just stick them on everywhere. To add to the cardboard, I put this caution tape up just to make it like super obvious that you're not gonna hit your head, which I totally didn't hit my head, maybe I did. So Angelo's been like tweaking with the surface grinder to get it nice and perfect. Um, let me see. Getting the beautiful finish now. And this is just a rough finish. Like This is just to get it flat for the mill. Yep. But these are damaged steel blades. And one of the secrets that Eric's been using for years, but is uh, what side do you do? The outside? Outside. So the seam on the belt is actually like a half loop that's glued together. See this piece of tape right around here? So that tape has thickness to it, and it's a bump, basically. So what do you do, Angelo? So yeah, we'll sand off the outside over here. So you're sanding off the grit on the we'll outside of that off tape. The grit right down any adhesive, yeah, almost down to the tape, and then we clean up the inside on this side on the edges. So that way, when it's passing over and it's going through, it's not going to create a high spot where you're going to see lines on yep. your on your product. Yeah, and you really notice that. Yep. And that's the same for. A 
belt grinder, 2x72, anything really. Um, yeah, I remember hearing that first a few years ago. Eric probably heard it before I did, but um, it's a good one. Yeah, it's useful. Another tip. Use an old Norseman blade to pry up blades off the magnetic chuck. Because everybody just has a Norseman blade kicking around. Is there even a serial number on that one? No, this is a uh, scrap. It's ancient scrap. That's awesome, though. Really old, actually, with the bearing pockets in there. Yeah. That's like one of the first 20 or something. Eric's got one for us real quick. Yes. When I sharpen the blade, I put a piece of tape right there because we don't do a little uh, cutout. Uh, a choil. A choil at the edge of the sharpened edge. So I put that there so I don't screw up and uh, sharpen too far up. Nice. And then it just comes right off. Boom. To stay fancy, green nail polish. Um, so I use that to mask off the important bits before I acid etch the blade. Does it have to be green? Uh, no, I just like it. You've noticed that some nail polishes work better than others. Yeah. Yeah, like this one has just been consistently good for the past few years, so, so I just get the same one. You just keep going back to the yeah. store. I want this one. Yeah. No, it has to be banana yellow or whatever. Yeah. And green is pretty easy to see, right. like the contrast on the blade, and just so you can clean it off really well. Um, good. Can I see this one? Yeah. So this one's been acid etched. You've also got stickers on the outside here. Yep. You can see the beautiful crisp line. It's very important. I've seen guys just kind of sloppy put nail polish on the detent track. Um, That's a very good tip that we do. And we used to, you know, try to carefully put nail polish around there, and it would just be all janky. And janky, nice word. Yeah. Uh, um, so we, yeah, we had a friend that made these up a long time ago. We're almost out now. Um, so yeah, the nail polish just helps make sure the important bits don't get touched if the sticker fails. And then the sticker makes sure that, on the other side, that the detent track stays perfectly good. And, and the smooth. bearing pockets. Yeah, that's less important than the detent track. Yeah. Because the bearings will roll it in. Right. What you got here, bro? So, <laughs> these are titanium, just rod. Uh, comes like that. And just fine, they're, they're like fantastic for, uh, you know, they're easy to bend so you can make little hooks and mounts. So for one, I can hang all my blades and make sure the at the nail polish dries without being like laying down on something. Right. Um, and use the same blades while etching. Yep. Cause yeah, I use it in etching because titanium doesn't get etched by muriatic or ferric chloride because it's a non-ferrous metal. Nice. Um, and then I can use it. I use them when I anodize too. And yeah, because. You can't anodize titanium with any steel or anything in there. Um, it's just gonna like short out and not work. Yeah, so I got these years ago from my buddy Martin Lemieux, I think was his name. It took me a while to remember. Um, Martin Lemieux, I forget what the website is. I think ringinator.com or Bikini Duck was one of his <laughs> other names. And uh, yeah, he makes this titanium chain mail. So like oh, for reenactments, the right? Dragon droppings. Yeah, dragon droppings, the hacky sacks. Yeah. It's downstairs somewhere. Right on the rack there. Oh yeah, it's right here. So he makes these guys. We've had this for six years. So he made this machine that like turns this stuff into rings and then he can make chain mail from it. Anyway, Martin's a cool guy. He's got a Tormac 770, I think. He made like these aluminum Jenga blocks once. That was pretty cool. Anyway, that's where we get this stuff from. I'm sure you can just find it on eBay, um, but super helpful stuff. So part of my job is cleaning off the knives and putting them on the website. And this is, this is a good thing to use too, but what I want to talk about is the boxes. I know it's going to be a good day if there's two boxes here on the second level of the shop because one of them is filled with cases and the other one should be empty. So when I finish with that, then I like, when I finish taking the pictures of the knives and putting them in the cases, then I take the finished knife in the case and I put it in the empty box so that I can very easily carry down a big box of just finished knives um, downstairs to John's workbench right there. And you can see that there's eight lined up there for John to approve. 
but uh, they wouldn't be on his desk right now if I had had an empty box to put underneath his desk. That green light tells us that somebody's in the bathroom. Because we only have one bathroom, we only have one sink. Uh, we're always like washing our hands or like cleaning parts off or whatever. And now anyone from anywhere can tell that somebody's in the bathroom. It's awesome. So it's literally green Christmas light bulb. I was going to do red, but it's like it was February when I got it and they had no more red light bulbs. So they had a green, uh, just an extension cord wired down to the bathroom. I had a, uh, an extension thingy with an extension plug in the light bulb socket. And I just wired this cable down super easy. And then Eric says to me the next day, he's like, oh, it's too bright. Yogurt tub, perfect. Quick and dirty, easy. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. I just missed it. The light turned off. <laughs> so not only do we buy Windex in bulk. <laughs> Baking soda. Um, Big boxes. Yeah, we use it for pretty much everything. Well, I use it for a lot of things. Um, it neutralizes like all the acids, ferric and muriatic. So after that, you you know do a good uh, baking soda and water rinse, and just make sure to get all the acid off. Uh, I use it to anodize stuff with because it makes the uh, the water a base liquid or something so that the electro process can work. And yeah. So another very important one that I took far too many years to understand, it was actually Barry that got us, forced us into it, uh, which is good. Um, you can see Eric's got a calendar on the wall right here with every day of the month, his actual output. I don't know if we need to like zoom in and be like close on yeah. it, but. Um, I didn't write anything there, but I did finish four knives there. Right. <laughs> tracking your progress, tracking your output, it's good for the team, it's good personally, because now Eric feels bad about a low day like for the rest of the month. Yeah. And I do the same on the mill, and I can be like, okay, I made six knives today, or like last Tuesday I only made zero, because if you don't track anything, then if I ask you, what did you do last Tuesday? You're like, I did a lot. I did a lot, yeah. yeah I was working I, all day. Right, but you have no idea. So tracking it, we've got, this is Eric's output. I've got my machine output there. We have a, a finished knife output downstairs. And uh, it's so important, you guys. I can't even stress how awesome that is. And we've been doing it now for, since the summer, like eight months probably. Yeah, at least. Six or eight months. Um, and you like it now? Yeah, I remember great. at first it felt like a chore. It felt like a little bit because you we know, don't like the right stuff down. Yeah, it just um, feels like another thing you have to do, but it's been key, I think. Yeah. Because then at the end of the month, now we have a number. We never had a number before. Yeah. Yeah. You you feel like you might have done a certain amount in the week. But right. If you actually go back and count, you're like, oh, wasn't. Yeah, that that's great. I was busy, but not productive, <laughs> not impressive. So. Whereas with this, you know, like. Holy crap, I did a lot. Right. Like, you have the proof. Yeah. The proof is in the pudding. Um, and, and you can see when you make uh, time improvements on things, like yep. how much they affect the week. Exactly. Um, I've heard the phrase, what gets measured gets managed. And I heard that in a fitness scenario. So you measure your, your workouts or whatever, but it works here too. If you measure your output, you manage your output. And then you can look back. We have months of history here. Um, that we can look back and we haven't really needed to look back but now we have data I like that I like data all right guys thanks for watching our tips and tricks video we had a lot of fun walking around the shop and just finding things oh yeah that's a cool thing I do that all the time um, I feel like we've maybe got a part two coming up because if you guys have any cool tips and tricks that you use in your shop please feel free to leave them in the comments I'm sure we can learn from them a lot uh, this video certainly wasn't an exhaustive list of everything that we do around here but just kind of things we notice as we're looking around. Uh, I feel like we need to make a, a checklist for the next video if we do more. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to reading your replies and uh, stay tuned for the next video. Take care guys, bye.